our entrance antiphon. As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. When Hezekiah was mortally ill, the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Put your house in order, for you are about to die. You shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, O Lord, remember how faithfully and wholeheartedly I conducted myself in your presence, doing what was pleasing to you. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go, tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. In three days you shall go up to the Lord's temple. I will add fifteen years to your life. I will rescue you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will be a shield to this city. Isaiah then ordered a poultice of figs to be taken and applied to the boil, that he might recover. And Hezekiah asked, What is the sign that I shall go up to the temple of the Lord? Isaiah answered, This will be the sign for you from the Lord, that he will do what he has promised. See, I will make the shadow cast by the sun on the stairway to the terrace of Ahaz go back the ten steps it has advanced. So the sun came back the ten steps it had advanced. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You save my life, O Lord, I shall not die. You save my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Once I said, in the noontime of life I must depart. To the gates of the netherworld I shall be consigned for the rest of my years. You save my life, O Lord. I shall not die. I said, I shall see the Lord no more in the land of the living. No longer shall I behold my fellow men among those who dwell in the world. You save my life, O Lord, I shall not die. My dwelling, like a shepherd's tent, is struck down and borne away from me. You have folded up my life like a weaver who severs the last thread. You save my life, O Lord, I shall not die. Those live whom the Lord protects. Yours is the life of my spirit. You have given me health and life. You save my life, O Lord. I shall not die. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, 
See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry, how he went into the house of God and ate the bread off offering, which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests, could lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? They say to you, Something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned these innocent men. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Would you like to know the day and time of your departure from this world? If you could, would you want to have that knowledge, the moment of your death? I think we might vacillate back and forth, right? So in one way, we'd like to know uh, because we could get things in order. Another way, we'd be frightened knowing that it's impeding and coming upon us. But in a sense, we do know that without the day or time that mortality is here for all of us. We're not here forever. And so in the first reading today, Hezekiah, who's mortally ill, realizes that he's about to die. And what advice is given to him by Isaiah? Put your house in order, for you're about to die. You shall not recover. And Hezekiah has two different choices when you have such news, right? One, he could reject it. He could try to live a hedonism, just enjoy everything he can. He could try to fight against it. But instead, he turns in prayer. He turns to the wall in solitude and intimacy with God. And he just prays, Lord, Please just remember how much I did try to be faithful to you, right? He doesn't necessarily even ask for more time, but you can tell because he weeps bitterly that um, he's sad for his own mortality. He's scared to die. And remember, again, this is the Old Testament. There's not yet the comfort of the resurrection, the truth of it, the proof of it in Christ's resurrected body and soul. And then Isaiah gives to the Lord, really, what is this prefigurement of resurrection? He says in three days, right? Think of that reference, right? Jesus was buried for three days, Good Friday, raised on Easter Sunday. In three days you shall go up to the Lord's temple and I will add 15 years to your life. Well, there's certainly much rejoicing, I'm sure, for Hezekiah because, oh, I still get to live. But he's still, once again, given a a terminus, right? An end to his life, 15 more years, but it's all you have, right? Sometimes I think that we really rail against death and certainly it is the outcome of original sin. In some ways, every sin we do is an experience of death. It it kills things. It kills relationships and love and life. But God brings good out of everything. And even out of death, there is that call to conversion. There is that finitude, right, finality, right, that allows us to really say, I can't just put off conversion to the next day and the next day and the next day. There's a deadline for our existence. And that's meant to help us, as it was for Hezekiah, to put our house in order. So, I know this is very somber, sombering. Is that the right word? Sobering, um, perhaps today. But on Fridays, we always take a special step back and always think of the passion of Jesus, his own death on Good Friday. It's a time to ponder our own mortality, too. Not as a curse, because we don't... um, and here, those who die, we pray go on to the Lord, right, if they're faithful to him. But that moment is actually a sacred one, and one that's given to each one of us, and it's meant to actually help us to get our house in order. So if, if you were to pass from this world, right, is your will set, and I don't mean just your physical will of material assets, but I mean your will to the Lord. Have you done what you needed to do? Have you reconciled? Have you rectified? Have you made penance with the Lord? Have you invited him back into your life? Because today could be any one of our last day, or it could be another 15 years, or 50 years, depending on who we are. But may that knowledge not be an impotent, impede us, but actually a hindrance to living, but actually an encouragement to live well and to live for the Lord. May the Lord be blessed. Amen. Our Masses today celebrated at Christ the King. 
will be offered for the repose of the soul of Don Goebel and also for the repose of the soul of Lori Kaplan Greco. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, taking up the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. For all those who cannot receive sacramental communion at this time, we now pray the prayer of spiritual communion. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you now sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, the saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Mass this day. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. One announcement that we at Christ the King for our parishioners will be opening up our reopening our Saturday 5 p.m. Vigil Mass uh, tomorrow. Um, so just an announcement, we have Masses already open on Sundays, but again tomorrow our Saturday 5 p.m. will reopen to the public. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>